Hey everyone, it is Game Face Episode 9. Marcus, I think this has been the slowest week in the games industry since we launched the show, hands down. Yeah, you might have to prod me to wake me up in a bit. I'm going to doze <laughs> off at some point. This is going to be a really boring show. I, I, I wouldn't watch this right now. I'd go and find watch somebody stream <laughs> Dota or something like that, or Dota 2 or League of Legends or some other brilliant, wonderful way to waste a Thursday afternoon. He's actually being snarky. We do have a good show, but it was hard mm. to get topics together for this show. Just and in, I think I just want to say off the top, this is like the Valve episode. We have talked. We're going to talk about Valve and Steam a lot in this episode. Pretty much all the really big stories from this week are related in some way to Valve. It seems yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we got a couple of other things. Oh, for sure. But yeah. I think predominantly there's lots of Valve talk, lots of PC talk, lots of mod talk in this episode. Uh, just to start off, I do want to address the website. Here we are. It's episode nine of Game Face. We had anticipated on launching the site well before this. In fact, the original idea was that we just do a couple of these, and then the site would launch, and we'd go right into it. Um, obviously, the site hasn't launched yet. The site is the Half-Life 3 of video game websites. <laughs> don't say that, because the site in, is going to launch. <laughs> tying into the Steam theme. I don't it's think Half-Life 3 is ever coming, but I know for a fact the site is coming. It's just, we have a very small team working on the site. You know, I'm one guy funding it, so we don't have this army of engineers, and our lead developer just can't seem to nail when he thinks he's going to get stuff done. Uh, with the time schedule that he keeps giving me, it just keeps getting pushed. I will say that we did finish the last page of Sifted yesterday. Basically, the last main page that needed to be built, it is done. And so we're finally now really just getting the polished stage. And I'm guessing around... E3 2016. No. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> I will kill myself if that Tokyo is the case. Tokyo Game Show 2237. <laughs> Right now, it, it's looking like it's going to happen around May 15th to May 20th. You know what? You, you need to stop putting dates on these You're things. probably right. Every I do. time you put a date on it, you fucking jinx it. You're right. That's what it is. It's your fault. Well, I, everything's my fault because I'm the one building the freaking thing. It will launch when it's fucking ready. <laughs> that I will agree with for sure. Uh, but just as a note, I am going on GT Live on May 20th uh, over at Game Trailers, their live show. They've asked me to come on there, and at the very least, I swear to you, it'll be done before then, or I, you will never see me again. They don't, ask, they don't invite me on these shows anymore. <laughs> What's up, Jones? Why you don't invite me on these shows anymore? Am I too much sex for you to handle? You don't trust yourself around me. Seriously, does the beard scare you? Do you want to curl up inside it and go to sleep? I'm sure they'll be in touch with you very shortly. I mean, I'd have to check to my email you. first. I'm up to 715 emails on my inbox, and I have just can't be bothered to look at them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think the intro has gone on long enough. We do want to get to the show. Well, it does say we have banter. I think we had some banter. So we're Would this bantering. not be classified as banter? And let's face it, it's better than, you know, we've got a quiet week, so, you know, this is probably <laughs> the high point. I definitely disagree with that. But that will be all left up to the big six. So the big stink this week, Marcus. Wasn't me, I bathed. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing is that this story actually changed like by the day. The big announcement first was that Valve was going to allow people to pay mod creators to do their work. So, which is something they've done with their own titles for a, for a little while. You know, people have been able to buy stuff for Team Fortress and um, Dota and you know whatever. Uh, you know, their own titles for a little while. But this was the first time they were expanding it, and they were expanding it to the game that really you know has come to embrace mods yeah. uh, more than any other. In Without Skyrim. a doubt, yeah, yeah, Skyrim. So yes, they announced it, they implemented it, and they poked it up. Did they really fuck it up? It was, look, I mean, even... Or was it just the vocal minority once again getting their way? Look, I think Lord Gaben himself, you know, he came down from on high, um, you know, <laughs> where he was obviously busy planning out Half-Life 3. 
uh, to say to all and sundry on a Reddit AMA, we kind of screwed it up. We, you know, we screwed up the implementation. We screwed. Well, up he the said messaging. that they didn't think about it enough before they did it, right? Which is PR speak for we screwed it up. Exactly. See, I'm teaching him. Um, <laughs> yes. So he did. And look, they they were. A what little, do you do? You think they screwed up though? You personally? Yeah, I do because I think that you know this is a this is a cool concept. It's a good idea. Matt's dying in the corner. You're right there. You know, cuddle. Um, look, it's a cool concept, and uh, you know, people put so many man hours into their mods, and they do prolong the life of the games. I mean, you know, Skyrim being the the one, you know, the high, it just even started with a high res pack, and now you have so many other mods. Well, yeah, we're showing added. some of them now. Like there was the one Spider-Man mod. Here is my favorite mod, though. It's the Randy Macho Man. Savage dragon oh, yeah. mod. He he actually says like the dragon says snap into a slim gym. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking brilliant. Like why does it whoever made this deserve to make a little money off of it? Like Well, I think you know the the other thing is that <laughs> Yeah, you know, you look at the the pay breakdown of X amount went to Steam, X amount went to Bethesda. And yeah, I think the moderator will get what twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. Which you know, the, but it's better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing, but it's a can of worms because you're dealing with somebody else's IP uh, on you know on somebody else's marketplace, and then there's the additional layer of um, IP that can, you know comes into it. For example, you know, if somebody's charging for the 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 Macho Man. Mod, which is really funny. Then the macho ones, uh, whoever controls their, their their likeness, can now come after these guys because they're profiting. Yeah. I mean, you know, where does the line? Where does the line stop? Well, I think I that mean, that goes into the approval process that Valve has in place, and and we'll actually get into this a little bit later with another game where their approval process kind of crapped the bed for lack of a better term but yeah, it's so funny dude i mean yeah <laughs> you, so yeah you, you mentioned the spider-man one as soon as people start going for profit mods will get taken down oh for sure yeah um but look it's like the high res pack which was like the first real big one like you know nobody's gonna sue them for that no one's gonna want a cut of money from that other than bethesda and whatever service and you know bethesda was working with valve on this like they were totally behind it and even I, after like the uproar Bethesda came out and said, you guys need to calm down. Like, you know, we're okay with this. This is cool. And then, what was it, two days later, after they made it okay, Gaben comes out and says, not okay anymore. Like I said, But it, most it was of the not... uproar, people were just angry that they were going to have to pay for something that they used to get for free. They, didn't, they weren't looking at the moral quandaries of it. They weren't looking at the financial side of it. They are just like, screw this. Like, I, I don't want to pay for this. I was getting this free. Dude, look, I think the idea of mods you can pay for is, uh, is a great one. It's a logical one. I guarantee because you Because it will make them better, right? If well, these people are... They prolong, they prolong the life of the game on so many levels so that the publisher perhaps doesn't have to worry about doing it and keeps a game going. And I guarantee you that... Most of the mods that we're talking about are ones that are still better than you would get on the forty dollar Arkham. Um, <laughs> You're probably right. Arkham Knight, <laughs> uh, you know, fucking, you know, forty dollars, whatever it was, uh, that DLC plan. Um, the problem is, people think, oh, I've done something for free. No, I'm going to get, you know, I'm getting screwed again by video games, um, which is kind of true because let's face it, most DLC packs that come from the big companies are bags of shit that aren't worth anything at all, let alone you know a, a couple of bucks. Um, and look, there was no guarantee that every single mod ever was going to get put on the say, you know, uh, people would would want you know to make the money from it. Um, and they weren't gonna retroactively charge you for every single mod that you'd already downloaded. Right. You know, it's like, I've downloaded 6,403 mods for Skyrim and I'm now bankrupt. No, it's it's not going to happen that way. I mean, basically, people will come up with new content, and why shouldn't the people who create some of this really good stuff and prolong the life of you of the game that you love, um, you know, why shouldn't they go off and and, and make a couple of bucks out of it? And if, it'll make it better because if they're motivated by money, like suddenly they they're like, oh, well, I'm going to even put more time into this because it's not just burning time in a hobby anymore. It's actually yeah. something that can sustain them. Look, the biggest problem I had with this was the amount of money that Valve were taking out of it. Yeah, their cut so, was too much. Yeah. They, they, you know, it was it was something like, was it 30 to Valve, 40 to Bethesda, 
and then... 20, it's 25 to the modders. 25 to the modders, 40 to Bethesda, uh, to Bethesda, and then the rest go into Valve, which is, let's face it, a little bit steep. I think that amount for Bethesda might be a little steep as well. well I mean, at the end of the day, like, yeah. It seems to me both of them could take 5 to 10% <laughs> off of what they were taking and give that to the modder. Bethesda owns the IP. Bethesda, uh, you know, people are working with the art assets on the whole and, mod and basically uh, changing basic art assets. Look, that they, they deserve provided. something, don't get me wrong. But um, I think that cut may be a little much because yeah. they're not doing anything really. The work has been done. It's like collecting interest off of money you have in the bank, essentially. Oh, it, it, it is. I mean, isn't that all, you know, all the big businesses? Now you get people sitting on, squatting on IPs and just holding them for ever and charging people you know for them but yeah I would I would have you know Blizz, um, Steam could have taken 20% and then maybe you know you would have split the, 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 the remainder you know 40 each to to, um, to Bethesda and whatever I think um, it will come back I think I think it'll definitely come back if Bethesda are smart they will actually not do it through Steam I think if Valve was smart they would have announced this well before they implemented it because they, they it would have, have given trialed it, it would yes. have had like a grace period there where people would have wrapped their heads around it a lot of the people who are the knee jerk angry people who as soon as they see something they're like oh I'm going online I'm going to go raise hell about this a lot of those people would have cooled their heads over that a amount of time a lot of those people would like, probably wouldn't know how to install a fucking mod yeah well, I, I mean, don't know obviously they know how to or they wouldn't be so angry about oh, it no, or no, maybe no. they're just trolls yes trolls on <laughs> Steam no surely not no I mean we look at it we've seen this happen week in week out over the last you know over the last few years that you know some small minor aspect of the internet gets its proverbial pants in a bunch about something forces somebody to change forces somebody to cancel something forces somebody to get off Twitter and it's you know, ninety percent of these people, you know, ninety percent of this small, vociferous, impotent little Cancerous. bunch of keyboard <laughs> fucking warriors, have no interest in in the the subject matter other than to get somebody to change something. Yeah, it's like yeah, I'd never go watch the Avengers because of the way Joss Whedon handles Black Black Widow, but I'm offended about the way he handled Black Widow. Yeah. What? Now looking at Valve and how they've handled this. I mean, our graphic says Valve looks wishy-washy, which they do. It's like you implement this big thing, and then two days later you take it down. How do you think that's going to be viewed by people? Do you think it's going to be viewed like they're indecisive from a corporate perspective? Or do you think people are going to be like, oh, they listen to their customers and that, and look at it from that perspective? Uh, I think you can split it 50-50 and where 50% of the people will say, oh, they look wishy-washy, and 50% of the people will say, oh, they're listening to their customers because they're two sides of the same coin. Uh, I basically say that within six weeks, it will all be forgotten about. Do you think it was a smart move by Valve to do this? Oh, what, pull it down? Yeah. Uh, no. I think they basically should have just refined it. They should have stuck through with it. They're fucking Valve. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know... You said it, it, Lord Gaben. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> the, you know, what, what people are... I'm, I'm stopping using Steam. Do you think it could be a case, though? Because they're charging for mods on a game that I probably don't even own. I was like, come on. Do you think it could be a case, though, where Gabe, maybe for one of the first times, felt the wrath of the internet? Because generally, yeah. the internet loves that guy. He's like a demigod. If you... Valve is this company that everybody reveres. Do All you right. think he maybe couldn't take the heat? No. I think that's bollocks, because at the end of the day, this is the guy who has not given us fucking closure on Half-Life 3. Yeah. This is who <laughs> Gabe is. That's who the, the Gabe we know, who's basically held a middle finger up to get PC gamers who for the last 10 million years or so it feels has been have been wanting Half-Life Episode 2 part uh, was it Half-Life 2 Episode 3 yeah. or Half-Life 3 that's what we want we want a Portal 3 we want a Left 4 Dead 3 I mean this is the guy who has aversions to the number 3 but I think we talked about it in a couple weeks ago is it I don't think we expect Valve to really crank out games again like the way it did it doesn't need to well, look, if they do, I know Gabe sure the hell doesn't want to work on games like that anymore. Well, if they, if they don't want to do it, then they should just fucking step away and just say, oh, we're a store. That's it. Which uh, is pretty much what because, they are. At because, this point. yeah. I Other mean, than Dota 2, I mean. Drop all pretensions to, to being involved in the games industry and just be a virtual fucking GameStop. And that's it. So let's move on. Uh, let's talk about uh, the wonderfully titled Ukulele because it's reached its Kickstarter goal and then some, which is a 3D platformer. Yeah, you love from, those. I do, I'm so, I mean, you can't see it, but I'm so aroused right now. Um, because it's a crowdfunded game that everybody's going to go bananas for until it comes out and then they're like, oh, well, I backed this, what? 
Um, <laughs> this is basically the Banjo Kazooie team. It um, is, yeah. Which is kind of rare esque. Um, made a million bucks, million dollars, which is 50 million US or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically, it, yeah, Shane, you got any interest in this? Because I certainly I don't. have a ton of interest. A lot of people do. They blew past their Kickstarter. I think it was the fastest Kickstarter to a million dollars ever. A million pounds. Pounds, right? Million yeah, pounds, that's right. Which is yeah. 20 million dollars. <laughs> fastest gaming. Yeah, in gaming. Yeah. yeah, the fastest gaming Kickstarter to that number. And they've gotten to the point with their Kickstarter now that they have such a surplus of money that they're now accepting more money for a fully orchestrated soundtrack. Like, that is where they've got to at this point. Now, this game is supposed to be the spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie, but, I mean, they even use the same font as Banjo-Kazooie for the game's logo. Like, I'm honest, like, look, they're ex-Rare guys. I'm sure they're friends with all the guys who are still at Rare. But, I mean, it almost is bordering on, like, IP theft at this point. Obviously, the characters don't look anything like Banjo and Kazooie. But the whole mechanic of them is the same. You have one main character. You have the other character that rides along on that main character. And that smaller character gives that main character more abilities. Like, here, they, they only show, like, the, the extended hover or whatever. But, I mean, man... You gotta figure, even though they're friends or whatever, some of the people at Rare have gotta be a little pantsed about this. I mean, it still is their IP, Banjo-Kazooie, even though they're not doing anything with it, although maybe at E3 we're hearing that we may see something from Rare. It, and it would be odd if it were a new Banjo-Kazooie game now that these guys are making this. But to answer your question, yes, I am very excited about this. This is one of my favorite genres. It's a genre that's pretty much dead. Even Nintendo, with the Mario games, the last Mario 3D World wasn't like a free-roaming 3D platformer. There were parts of the game that were like that, but a lot of the game was also kind of on a side-scrolling 2D plane where you were kind of forced in one direction. And so I'm very excited about it. A free-roaming 3D platformer that lets you tackle things the way you want. My big concern is, is it just another Banjo-Kazooie? Because as great as that game is, and I loved, I loved Banjo-Kazooie, I loved Banjo-Tooie, literally dumped over 50 hours in each one of those games, I don't think I would want to play those games exactly over again. And based upon the early footage that we're seeing of this game, that's kind of what it's looking like so far, is it? yes, it's another Banjo-type game, but there's got to be something more, I guess, is the way I'm putting it. It can't just be, okay, here's this game from 1998 or whenever the first BK launched, and now we're putting it out in 2015 or 2016 or whenever it, it finally comes out. Like, they can't just rest on their laurels. They need to do something. There's a reason this genre has gone away. And there's a reason why you don't give a crap about it. Because it got boring. Why did it get boring to you? Because a lot of people complain about the collecting in these games. Where you're just collecting notes. And, and my contention always was with the collecting was... The collecting led you to new places in the level that you needed to be good at platforming to get to. So while, sure, you're collecting all these notes, what you're really doing is being led by, by a breadcrumb trail to this new part of the level that you needed to discover, and the notes were just kind of a byproduct of that. Look, so the only time I've had any interest in a 3D platform game over the last couple of years was when I saw the um, Oculus Tech demo last year yeah. where they actually made 3D platformers seem enjoyable. Oculus can make anything. Or, Virtual reality, well implemented, can make anything enjoyable. It did it for Doom Again, 3. Yeah, it, and it did it. It revitalizes it, yeah, it for sure. It really does. But um, look, I I just I'm you know, I'm not a big fan of 3D platformers anymore. I just think, you know, they, they hit um, a penetration or saturation point. Um, they you know, you, you also look at games like the, the Spyro Skylanders game and, the, and see those... I feel like those are that's like a bastard that's I, I I'm glad you brought that up because you're right. A lot of people, when they think of 3D platformers now, they think of the Skylanders games. And those are just bastardized. Those are the worst 3D platformers. But well, you're right. They're like the only thing that exists in the genre anymore. Yeah, well, you also look at what they did with Sonic. They turned Sonic into a 3D platformer Which because they turned Mario into a 3D platformer. And while Mario worked as a 3D platformer, Sonic has just been fucking screwed. Well, the speed is a huge issue with Sonic and 3D platformers. Like yeah. moving that quickly, there's just no real good way to use it. And I think, and I think that they figured that out now after 
God knows how many games that they've created with that model. Yeah. I mean, the 3D platformer has become basically the, you know, it's the easy, it's the, it's the McDonald's, you know, it's the fast food of, of being able to slap out a game, stick a 3D platformer. I mean, the, ne the next title we're going to talk about, 3D platformer, because, the, you know, the last two iterations have been 3D platformers in, in a lot of ways. So, yeah, I, I just, I mean, is this PC only or is this going to come well, out? Well, it was console? initially only announced as PC, but they've pretty much confirmed at this point there will be a Wii U version and probably other console versions. So it will eventually come to probably all the consoles. And the way the Kickstarter is going, I mean, it could end up being released for, like, the 3DS. I mean, that's how much money is flooding in for this project. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stay positive on it. Hit, but, that, hit that buzzer, man. I th <laughs> I th thank you. But looking at the footage, I am a little concerned. It's also a six-man team, and it, the BK games were enormous. And I think they used 20 to 25-man teams to build those, but they'd take two and a half and three years to make them. So if it comes out this it, there's no way it'll come out this year, a six-man team. But if it comes out next year, towards the end of the year, I feel a little more confident about it. I'm excited. I'm just excited to get a quality game in this genre but I'm a little reticent to just dive on in. I have not contributed to the Kickstarter as excited as I would be about it. I just, I eventually want to be able to evaluate this game and I don't feel right doing that if I had contributed to his Kickstarter. So thank you to everybody else who contributed the money to the Kickstarter for a game that I want to play. Nostalgia is a dangerous thing. As a wise warthog once said, put you behind in the past. Yeah. All right, so as Marcus said, there is another 3D, two 3D platformers in the same show. That's crazy. But there is another one we're going to talk about today. And this one is tied to a massive license, not a new IP. And Marcus, that is Disney Infinity 3.0. Basically, Disney Infinity Star Wars, I think, is probably the best way to describe it, right? Yarp. How are you feeling about this? Um, is it a shameless... No, well, look, it, was all, it was always on the cards. I mean, look. You it, predicted this, by the way. I think in the first or second episode of Game Face, you said, look, the next Disney Infinity is going to be awesome. Dude, Wars. I actually predicted it two years ago uh, on a uh, bonus deal. round. When they signed the deal. Yeah. Uh, on a bonus round, I think, with, with Jeff, um, where it was like, all right, well, we know Marvel's, uh, like, you know, Marvel superheroes are coming. And then after that, we'll see Star Wars because they just announced the new film. Right. So yes, it was always something that was going to be very, uh, you know, very much on, on the, um, you know, on, on the, the cusp. horizon. Yeah. I mean, the thing and here that, it is. The thing they need to do, um, and I'm, this is what I'm really hoping that they will do this time. They need to up the game, the quality of the game. Because we talked about this see, with. Yeah. See, that's why I hate these games. There's no game to them. They're well, just look. I mean, there, it's there like was, a means to an end. There was an advance between one and two. One, I mean, the, the Incredibles, a lot of people like that, the Lone Ranger, but they are very, they were very repetitive. For two with the Marvel superheroes, they upped it a little bit more. It almost had a um, Lego Marvel kind of feel to it, which is not nece necessarily a bad thing. But again, for this one, they're going to need to up it exponentially again, because this is, you know, again, coming for the, the new gen platforms or the current gen platforms as they are now, there's going to there's gonna be a lot of Star Wars hype around it. Um, I mean, this toys. thing's gonna sell like freaking yeah, crazy. But, look, I, <laughs> like, regardless I, I, of how good or bad it, I mean, the, none the of these games look, are really good games. They're not. They're, they've not been outstanding games. Disney like Infinity. I, said, I mean, you can go down the list. Skylanders. They're all like. Amiibo. It's like I said. They're bastardized versions of the yeah. 3D platform. The worst attempts at they, the 3D platformer. They need to evolve the gameplay, and I'm hoping that they do this time around. Because look, I mean, we're talking Star Wars. Um, what concerns me is that you know the 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 stuff that we've then seen. They bring out the playset where, you know, for example, for Marvel, and they brought out the toys, and then it kind of just went, fuck, and really just, like relied on the toy box, you know, content that was that was coming, but nothing really new and exciting came along. And look, with Star Wars, we're looking at original trilogy, we're looking at the prequels. <laughs> um, you know, there will, won't be anything from the Force Awakened and, and, and the other, the other one, the other ones coming along there. Um, but we need to have a really good Star Wars experience. And look, you know, if if you're using a baseline of level of quality of game, it has to be at least as enjoyable as Lego Star Wars was. Yeah. Because remember when that one came out? I mean, obviously they brought out the prequel one, which was you know kind of funky, but then. Lego Star Wars original trilogy came out, and that was the one that was like, 
this is fucking cool. Yeah. Because you are playing the original trilogy. And I'm hoping that it's just not going to be uh, another bunch of play sets. I mean, I hope the team that's behind it are really working hard to, you know, at least give us some of that, you know, the, the humor that we got in the, you know, the Lego games. And just, you know, pay homage a little bit. I mean, obviously, the, the Clone Wars, I think, is going to be implemented in there. And Star Wars Rebels and all the other things that I won't watch because, you know, if it's not original trilogy, it's shite. Generally, um, that's a pretty safe rule to follow. I know. I mean, I, obviously, <laughs> there's a bunch of people sharpening their pitchforks right now who love Clone Wars, apparently. But Clone Wars is tied in prequels and prequels are disgusting but yes um it's going to make a shitload of money for them this year um, but here's one thing i'll say i have a little nephew he's five years old and he loves star wars i've never been a more proud uncle than when my sister sent the photo of his birthday cake and it was a star wars cake because i always wondered you know is this property going to pass on to that next generation and sure enough it has he is just as addicted to star wars as I was whenever I was a kid, and that's when they were first coming out, and like yeah. they had all that momentum. So it is good to see how this property is kind of transcending generations, and well, the kids we, are back into it again. We were at, uh, you know, we, 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 we were, you know, Matt and I were at the uh, celebration a couple of weeks ago, and there were a lot of kids around. And I think a lot of those have come from Clone Wars, you know, the Clone Wars cartoons, which are a great way to, you know, to put your kids in, uh, into it. And, you know, kid, people who are, are our age, went to see Star Wars when we did, when they were kids and grew up with it and are, are passing it on now. I mean, my worry is that it'll be, it'll be too Disney-fied. Too fucking Disney-fied because look, the original Star Wars, you know. Uh, There's a little grit in there. You Honestly, I, I was having a, a conversation on Facebook a couple of days ago with somebody, a good friend of mine, um, and he was, you know, he was saying, could you imagine people talking about Star Wars now? If And this was based on the Joss Whedon issue that happened right, this week. Right, right. Uh, you know, how would people react to Star Wars if Twitter was around? And I said, how would people react to Return of the fucking Jedi? Yeah. With Princess Leia in a slave bikini being chained to Jabba the Hutt if Twitter was around nowadays? And the Ewoks. And yeah, the... <laughs> it, would never, it would never have got beyond the planning process because everything's focus tested to within an inch of its life oh, yeah. anyway. So we wouldn't have had... Right. Jedi. I mean, we might not have had Ewoks, which is not a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> but we wouldn't have had, you know, Leia, Slave Bikini, which worked with, you know. I mean, and let's face it, the amount of people in cosplay Leia Slave Bikini. Yeah, uh, I think the know, proof's in the pudding on that one. That one is very popular. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people seem to like it. And yeah. cosplay does not mean consent, by the way. I'm not ogling. I'm just saying it's a very popular thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Disney Infinity has to up the game. Literally, uh, the toys I will agree, be great. One thousand percent. For me personally, I think kids like my little nephew. He'll get that game and play it and stick but his little toys on it. He'll love it. That's the thing. The, the the kids won't actually perhaps love it as much because there's nothing worse than you know dumbing down games for kids. Because I'm talking about a five year old though. But, but five year old. I mean, you know, your target audience for a Star Wars game is five to sixty five. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because we've all <laughs> you know we're talking about a thirty uh, you know. Th 30 plus year. Yeah. Uh, you Certainly know, anything based upon the original trilogy, you would think you'd almost want to skew that a little older. Well, look, I mean, you, you can appeal to all types. I mean, the one thing I will say always about the Disney Infinity stuff is the quality of the toys are great. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I've had the Skylander stuff um, and, you know, the games, of, you know, this first Spyro game was just so bad. Yeah. I, I did have a, a, you know, an attachment to Spyro having been at Vivendi. Sure. And uh, what they did to that, you know, just, ugh. Well, um, then Vivendi really killed Spyro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, I mean, look, this this could be cool. I mean, it's good, but just don't dumb it down. And I wonder, too, if a lot of the kids have bothered to go back and watch the original trilogy. Well, I'm guessing, I mean, I see a lot of people, you know, friends of mine on Facebook who are, you know, showing the kids the original, original trilogy. I mean, obviously, they're being expo ex exposed to the special edition. Right. Which has hand shooting first, which is not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, Disney. Hey, there you are. You want to do something cool? Release the original original trilogy before Lucas went all over it. Yeah. All right, move on. Let's move on before the buzzer arrives. Um, <laughs> let's uh, after a 3.0. Let's talk about a 2.0. Yeah, and that's probably what this will be. It probably will be called 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> 
rumor is rampant. Is it? Is it's not confirmed, it's, is it? Well, what happened was a guy who works for Ubisoft applied to a job and posted his resume online, and on his resume it had Watch Dogs Two, and so it's all but confirmed. No, so if it's not true, that guy's definitely not getting the job. I'll yeah. say that much. <laughs> so there you go. Watch Dogs Two is coming, and the, and the the question on the rundown is what do we want from Watch Dogs Two? And I I'll answer that with no. Watch Dogs 2. <laughs> you really didn't like it at all? You didn't enjoy um, it at all? I felt that um, I got sold a bill of goods. I wasn't delivered the game that was promised. Well, what I mean, parts did you feel well, like we're missing from? Look, I mean, we, I went to, you know, we went to the, uh, the reveal the first time, you know, the first reveal at the E3 press conference, and then they had the Sony announcement for the PS4, and then I went up and um, played the game and covered it for, uh, for game trailers. You know, I went up to one of, the, one of the, actually, I think I went to two preview events. And they, you know, it was one of those things that every time they showed it, they would only show us a stage managed, choreographed little thing. Yeah. And when the game came out, it was a triumph of style over content. I mean, you know, we've got 300 million hours of stuff, and it's like, but it's not fun. But most of it, you're and, right, was not fun. It's a lot of the same shit over and over. It was and very over. repetitive. Towards the end of the game, I really started waning. I had to drag my butt across the finish line. With Which, that you game. know, I don't, I don't have the patience to do anymore. And you know. Watch Dogs was such a great concept, but it was it was the one the problem with Watch Dogs it slipped. Once it slipped and wasn't one of the first PS4 games to come out, yeah. they were in trouble. But not only that, once it slipped beyond Grand Theft Auto Five, yeah. they were triple fucked. Because let's face it, GTA Five takes you know kicks the crap out of Watch Dogs it because really they, does, you know yeah. they're open world environments they're going to be compared even though one is an apple and the other one's maybe a pear yeah but they're going to be compared to each other um, and Watch Dogs does not hold a candle to Grand Theft Auto Well it couldn't Five. hold it for the whole length of the game which is something that Rockstar is really good at is is managing the missions and the mission types to to a point where you rarely get sick of the missions by the time you get to yeah. the end of a GTA game exactly. but there's still a little fatigue there my biggest complaint about Watch Dogs, though, was the driving. The driving, one, was terrible. Yeah. Two, there was, no, there was nothing to do. Like, in GTA, you can, like, shoot and do all these other things while you're driving. But in Watch Dogs, you basically you just... You can change your traffic lights. <laughs> yeah. You can pop up the bollards and... and but that's and how to... every driving mission had to end. Like, you could never just outrun somebody. You had to use, like, the hacking stuff to cause an accident or whatever. Like In Watch Dogs It too, was an open world. I felt like the whole Watch Dogs was way too scripted. Maybe that's the best way to put oh, it. it. Was, like it for was, an open world game, everything seemed predetermined and you had to do everything exactly how they wanted you to do it. Yeah. And that's not, as you said, the bill of goods that we were sold when the game was first shown. In Watch Dogs 2, the way they'll get around it is when you're in the car and you're hacking and driving, you'll be able to find the guy who's following you and change his Facebook status to that he's divorced or something. So he'll be distracted because his <laughs> wife will call him and, or, you know, upload some pictures of, you know, doctored pictures on the fly of him with a stripper. And the wife will call him and scream at him and the, the pursuit will be called off. Because that's that's the, the the way it's going to go. Apparently, I look. It's Ubisoft. They're trying to build another franchise. Um, you know. We're what about the character? To me, that is probably next to the driving, which is a big part of an open world game like this. The lead character in this game, I had no affinity for him whatsoever, and I think part of it was intentional. Like they wanted him to be standoffish and. Yeah, but if you're playing the character. You've got to have some sort of a, a attachment to you. I had none to you. of this you guy, though. He hardly but ever spoke. Like, isn't that isn't that unfortunately the way of ninety percent of the characters in games now? The unless you're playing a game like a Skyrim or a Fallout, where you're putting your personality into the, into the responses, or Mass Effect or uh, Dragon Age, you look at the characters that we have to deal with now. You and they are basically. They're, they're all focused group to hell. Yeah, like, I mean, this guy had he's no been, soul. He probably initially had, did have a soul and was just, it was all focused grouped right out of him. Yeah, I mean, you look at Infamous Second Son. I mean, they had this character, uh, Delson or Robitussin or whatever his fucking name was, <laughs> um, Advil uh, or some other, you know, pain relief and, you know, anesthetic. But, I mean, again, no personality whatsoever because 
Yeah, and, and they'll say, well, we want you to put your personality in the game, but they don't give you the fucking tools to put Well, in this game, in you couldn't really do that. You're supposed well, to play as don't. this yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's... Graphics, too, what was initially shown to us and what we ultimately got were two different things. Like, I'd just be happy if the game ended up looking the way the first one was supposed to look. And you know, this is the... You know, you go back to, you go back to Halo. Master Chief was this shell. And his personality did start to come out, you know, a little later, later on. Later, yeah. Yeah, when, with Cortana coaxing it out. But I think a lot of people still think that because you can get away with Master Chief being this... Standoffish, sort yeah, of everybody else monolithic. Could, but you've got to have some things to fill in that gap. Or, you know, like I said, you go back to Skyrim and, you know, you can play your character one way or another. Yeah. Or you look at... Um, That's the other thing about the first Deus one was the, morali the whole morality thing in this game was basically completely irrelevant. It was there, but it didn't really do anything in the game. Yeah. I mean, look, if Watch Dogs 2 means that we're going to take a break from Assassin's Creed... We're not, though. We're not. <laughs> uh, it does not it. mean that, by the way. But, uh, yeah, I just... I can't see the point. I mean, look... It uh, sold really well. It. it I think... It, well, it it's sold Metacritic because... Metacritic uh, settled in around a little above an 8, I think. Well, that's because most reviewers these days are fucking morons, Shane. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> remember what? Remember? Do you remember working for a site where it would be all right if somebody goes to a preview event, they won't actually review the game. Yeah. Now it's we're going to send the same person to six different preview events, go out for drinks with, with the PR team and the development team afterwards, and then we'll let them review the game. We saw a lot of that with Bloodborne. A lot of uh, outlets were saying, "Yeah, we had our Bloodborne fan review the game," which. That's kind of a dicey proposition there because Bloodborne is such a difficult, challenging game that if you don't have experience with it beforehand, you can almost guarantee that that game is going to end up with a rotten score. So you're not ever, but look, I mean, for half the, there's nothing wrong with being a fan, but the best fans are the ones who can actually see the wood for the trees. The problem is that a lot of outlets nowadays have the fanboys review them, and the fanboys have crept into the media. How can um, you have a fanboy for something like Watch Dogs, a brand new idea? But I mean, it, it's, it's the fanboy who will go to six, six different events, oh. who will be in charge of looking at every one of the 3,714 videos they released, um, you know, who has basically become, you know, I've, you know, oh, look, we've hired this guy to, to do the Watch Dogs coverage. Where's he from? I love watchdogs.com. <laughs> I mean, it, it is like that. I mean, it's like, are you an expert in Halo? Are you an expert on Bungie games? Well, we want you to do our Halo podcast or our Bungie podcast. Or, you know, we talked about the Destiny one, yeah. Destiny one earlier that, that a site has. And it's like, how much fucking news... Is there for these games on a you know on a, to fill out a weekly basis? I mean, I gotta tell talking, you, we talk about all games, and we couldn't find a lot of shit to talk about this week. And yet these motherfuckers could come up with thirty-seven different ways to discuss the glass toilet raid in fucking Destiny. <laughs> come on, that's not media. That's not journalism. That's fanboyism, wanking from a very great height. And it's the big sites who are doing it. And they should feel ashamed. Of course, Here's they the thing, Marcus, though. Look, I ran editorial every place I worked exactly how you described. You know, Matt worked with me at G4. I did it the same way. If somebody previewed a game, they couldn't review the game. If I knew someone was a big fan of something, I kept them away from it. But it doesn't matter. That's a sad truth. Nobody notices and nobody cares. You still get accused of being bought off just as much as everybody else. Your reviews still get targeted for saying they're stupid or they're insane. Your reviews still get targeted saying, oh, that was re reviewed by a fanboy, or oh, that was reviewed by somebody who hated it. Like, yeah. nobody notices when you do stuff the right way, and nobody cares. And I think that's what a lot of these sites have learned is like, well, let's see. We could give this assignment to somebody who doesn't know it as well, but as the assigning reviews editor or as this, the assigning previews editor, that means I have to do a ton more work because that copy's gonna come in, there's gonna be inaccuracies in it. If I hand this to a fan, they know everything about this series. They, but I'm tell, just telling you from a practical perspective why it's done because there's no reward for doing things the right way in this industry. There really isn't. And yeah, I think- it's, it's societal. Maybe there's in no, general in society no there really isn't. Everybody I mean, look at the Patriots, what happened. That whole report came out about the Patriots underinflating footballs. But if you go and look at all the comments on the stories about it, they're like, they won the Super Bowl. Who cares? They have another Lombardi trip. Nobody well, cares. Apparently, Tom Brady's being forced to play for the Jets next year, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is punishment. Just an indeed. example in 
outside of games where kind of the same thing is happening. But Marcus, when you're running a business, it's like you start looking at stuff like that. And if you're like the reviews editor at one of these big sites and you start handing these <laughs> games out to people it. who don't know them, and you end up having to copy edit the, each one of those reviews that's why for an that's extra why, two hours. That's why you have the term editor in your fucking title. But you know people this, by I know nature this. follow the path of least resistance. This, that's just this is the way it is. But this is the problem. This is the this is what we call the Gorka Media problem. You know uh, that they've created. You know BuzzFeed, um, yeah. where there are journalists who are being put out to pasture because they are principled and, and these guys don't have. Nice big houses. They don't have flash cars. They've been doing games journalism for 20, 30 years, haven't been making a shit ton of money, but have been getting by and are now dumped on the, the scrap heap, even though they're still top quality journalists. Why? Because they won't do the pandering bits. They won't be an out and out fanboy when it comes to, you know, Destiny, Assassin's Creed, Skyrim, whatever. And that's the a lot of problem. people just don't want the truth. That's the bottom line. They want somebody who is going to reassure them that their preconceived opinion. And in fact, the majority of people are like this. They don't want the truth. Yeah. They want somebody to tell them that what you already think they want validation. is right. They want validation. Yes. And this is the problem. And look, I'm going to be old man, get off my lawn here. This is the millennial generation problem that they and the problem has come not from them but from their fucking helicopter parents who've hovered around make sure that nothing they've not come into contact with any sort of failure who basically said oh you you lost on a soccer team that that, that scored that was outscored 116 goals to nil well have a trophy anyway these are the ones that when i was back in pr i was watching these people come in and i was interviewing them and they were like well, um, you know, I'm happy to, to apply for this, you know, junior PR thing, but how soon can I get to PR director? Yeah. Or, you know, what, you know, how, how soon can I get a promotion? I came I think in any four hiring days manager running. has dealt with any hiring manager has dealt with that who's worked in a corporation for the last even 10 last 10 years really no, has I'd been say, the change. I'd, yeah. I'd say yeah, 8 to 10 years. People don't want to pay dues anymore. And the truth of the matter is that a lot of people don't have to pay dues anymore. And they can become crazy successful without ever doing it. They can go straight from 0 to 100. And I don't think it's right to be angry at people who do I'm accomplish not, that. I'm not angry, I'm not angry at them. I'm angry at the system that's producing them. I'm angry sure. that we are you're saying, failing. You're saying you don't hate the player, you hate the game. Well, which I'm, is exactly know, the, how the it's system, supposed to work. Yeah, the system is so broken and you know this is why people like you and me aren't working for big sites anymore because we don't fucking want to because it's a bunch of bullshit yeah and this is why you'll always get your watchdogs to your assassin's creed 78s and you will jerk off over the latest version of fucking skylanders or call of duty because there are people who will you know not question or not question in the right way because everybody want, every, everybody's own opinion is perfect, and we're all going to close our ears now. Well, everything's driven by traffic way. and money. That's the bottom line. And yep. trust me, you know, if you work at a major site, you have weekly meetings or more than one meeting a week where you have people come in and show you these rungs of data yeah. that tell you how to run your business and tell you what you should be doing to be successful. And you know, some it, it all depends on how good the data is. If you're gathering data from outside, a lot of times it's inaccurate. But if you're just looking at your own on-site data, like, for instance, you're talking about, you know, Destiny, how a lot of editors love Destiny. Well, the truth of the matter is, is they got it the reports traffic. from their site. And they're yeah. like, hey, there's a ton of people who come to our site looking for Destiny stuff. Let's do a Destiny podcast or Destiny whatever. Who here that works with us likes Destiny? People put their hands up. Those people get put on those projects. It, from a business perspective, it makes sense. But it's it's you're right i mean it really it's is pandering. the system it is pandering but it's all it is also the system that's created this i don't really I'm, hold like the journalists responsible for it because they have to survive and look i'm starting a business and you know i have to look at things realistically too like i have to look at it and be like do i need to create i'm content? not doing a destiny podcast <laughs> i'm not i would never ask you to come on a destiny podcast but you do a destiny I'm just, podcast i'm leaving i'm just being a bit of devil's advocate here and explaining you know when you own a business or you run a business you do tend to look at things a little bit differently and a lot of it is driven by data and numbers look so. i understand because me and my wife own a, uh, own a business and you know we do do the same things in a certain way there's some but things that you have to do that you don't want to do for the better of your business but when it comes to trying to create content and uh, out of nothing and just rumor and innuendo and base a fucking story or a podcast around that that's scraping the barrel that's tabloid yeah that is fucking new york uh, post 
That's the Sun, that's the Daily Mirror, that's National Enquirer level of bullshit. This Fox News bullshit, basically, and MSNBC. And that is the problem that we're getting in games. And it, it just kind of sucks, and it's depressing. It yep. depresses me. I don't go to game sites anymore. I really don't. Except I mean, Sifted. I will when it, go, when it goes live. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is why I, I didn't really know much about ukulele, to be honest with you. Because, again, I have... Why? Because I will see ha half a dozen journalists on Twitter spooging over it when they're supposed to be fucking objective about games. Yeah. You're supposed to be objective if you call yourself a journalist. Otherwise, just call yourself a media fuckhead. Yeah. So it is, I think it is time to move on. I think we've explored Watch Dogs 2 as much as we can with no and footage, I went off on another no tangent. screenshots, and just a rumor. That's my tangent check for this week. I basically, he pats me on the head and gives me a cookie if I go off on a really wild tangent. Yeah, yeah. So on to the fifth topic of the big six. So, Marcus, this week, somebody, and here's what we were talking about earlier. We were saying, oh, there needs to be better checks and balances with Steam. So yeah. this week, some numb nuts decided to upload a game to Steam, which basically is just a shooting game where you kill transgenders and homosexuals. I'm not even gonna say the name of the game because I don't want this guy to get any notoriety for oh, this. Oh, look, he's getting, the, he's getting the notoriety. He's getting the full fucking Monty is what he is. And this is a guy who is also This a game went live on Green Steam. Light. Yeah. Green light. Jim Sterling found it, and Jim Sterling played it, and Jim Sterling in ripped fact, it apart. The, f the footage that we're going to run on the show today is from Jim Sterling, and we thanked him in the footage, but I'll just thank him here on the show as yeah. well. Thank you very much, Jim, for getting that footage before it was taken down. And if you don't already, you should subscribe to Jim's channel. Yes. He does all the stuff that Marcus and I are talking about. He gives you the straight jibs. So yeah. definitely check out his channel. But let's get back to the topic of this game. Marcus, have you ever seen a game more deplorable. And also, here's here's the messed up part about the whole thing. Video games have become too easy to make yep. when an idiot like this guy can make a video game. Because make no mistake, this guy is a moron. Oh, this guy is a fuckhead of the, of the lowest order, if you will. This is a guy who also marketed a line of Christian shoes. Yeah, Christian shoes. Christian what exactly shoes. is that? Um, I'm guessing their shoes called Christian. Do they have or, a soul? They they always have a soul. They like. have. They each come with a soul. <laughs> Matt pointed out one earlier. Do they walk on water? Yeah. Um, when you when you die and get to heaven, Saint Peter lets you walk on the clouds without damaging them. Uh, I mean, basically, Christian or Jesus shoes is one is one of the other things that we they got called, which means they're fucking sandals. Yeah. Um, but this this is a guy. This this is a guy who is you know he's. From Huntington Beach, you know, he's, which is odd, which is close, to, is close here. But again, this is the same neck of the woods where we had the, the, the an asshole um, put a, a bill out recently saying that all homosexuals should be shot in the head, yeah, uh, because sodomy is disgusting. I mean, they're, they're, well, that's you know, pretty much what this game is. It's yeah. basically Matt. If you can get the footage going, okay. there's a uh, people just running side. It's the most simple game ever. Here you can see it. It's just people running sideways, and you just try to target them and shoot them. And when you do shoot them. Well, you can see stuff comes up on the screen there. There's also some god-awful voice samples that are played. Yeah, I mean, look, this this reminds me of one of those late 1980s shooter games, you know, arcade Light gun games. Game, yeah. Light gun games, but without any... Well, you can see there's some uh, yeah. less than desirable text up yeah. on the screen there. I mean, there, it's, so. it's fucking rancid. And look, this but is... But how did Valve let this get up on their... Because they let anything go up. And again, this is the problem with Valve. They will let en almost anything... I mean... I would rather they keep going with their paid mods, uh, you know, in its no, last sure. iteration, <laughs> which was fucked up, for and sure. actually put some of that big fat cash that they're making towards a curation system for green. Or Lake. just somebody who looks at stuff before it goes up. Yeah, Steam. Just one dude. Steam. Like green how many Lake. games are submitted a day? Let's say worst case scenario, five hundred games are submitted in a day. One guy green, well, could green. have looked at that and. Pick this up. And you look make sure at the title went. and you say no. No. Yeah. Look at the title. You look at the screenshots. You say no. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, this was a failure from top to bottom. This, for this, Steam. Uh, you know, they they've pulled it. This sort of problem is, yeah, you know, it's too easy to make a game. I mean, you know, back in our day, games were it's hot. It's so but then easy. Again, back in our day, if our that day, guy can make that game, 
We can definitely make a game. We can maybe make a pretty good one. Kill all Christians? Oh, God, no. Oh, I, I'm fucking agnostic. I believe in Santa Claus and Homer Sim Simpson and the rest of you can kiss my ass. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, anybody can create a game just like anybody can get on fucking YouTube. Yeah. I mean, it be, you know, the more Is people... Is it that easy at this point to make a video game? The, mo the more people... The, the, Is Unity that user-friendly? Well, the, the more you lower the barrier of entry the more the low-hanging fruit get in. Yeah. And let's face it, low-hanging fruit... But there's a positive to that, too. There's thinkers. also people who maybe have a really good idea for a game or was always intimidated, didn't want to make it because they're like, I can't program, I don't know how to work with middleware. But Then, it could, then that they, person can make their game now. And then they get submitted as Theme Greenlight, and because they are somebody who perhaps tries to put something a little more socially conscious there as opposed to kill all whatever that game, you know, was, uh, game was called, uh, they get downvoted. Because the little trolls, and again, this comes back to the Steam Greenlight system. You can't let users vote to put shit on, you know, to, to let shit uh, pop onto something. Because Here's it's other, so look. easy to break the system. And let's face it, a person can be smart. A small group of people can be smart. But when you go into the herd mentality, you are only as smart as the dumbest fuck in the group. And when it comes to the internet... We're all at the level of dumb fucks. <laughs> we all are because... Here's the thing, though. It's like, look, I think this game is deplorable. I think it should never exist. I think it's disgusting. But I, there's I, also a question of censorship here. And I'm actually going to bring up another game that's kind of had some issues with Steam over the last few months. It's a game called Hatred. Yeah. Have you checked out that game at all? I, I, I had a look at it. What did you think of that game? I got no problems with it whatsoever. None at all? None did at all. Did you watch the trailer all the way to the end? Yeah, Because what they it. do with this game is like, the trailers start, and it just seems like this innocuous isometric shooter. And then in the last like 30 seconds, they show you what the game is really all about. And this game is about a serial killer who doesn't care about anyone or anything, and he just kills everybody everybody and everything. And the reason I have... And quite violently... The reason I have no problem with this... Because he kills fucking everybody. Yeah, he doesn't discriminate. Doesn't discriminate. And that's the thing. The, the last game was called, you know... So this, for, by the way, so this game is as an AO. I watched the trailer for this. It was the first time I have ever seen the ESRB's AO logo at the beginning of a trailer. And oh, you should initially... Have done, you should have done the Leisure Suit Larry game. The, 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 um, the, 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 was it the downloadable only version of Le the last Leisure Suit Larry game we did? But, so this game initially was actually... Steam told them, you're not going to be yeah. able to release this game on Steam. And so they somehow filtered this game out. They, they, well, no, <laughs> Maybe they should have just put was, it up on Greenlight. Well, this was, this was pulled and then it was put back again, apparently. And look, I, the reason I have no problem with this is because its level of absurdity it's, But I don't think the, it does try no, to make it... It's not like GTA no, where it's like me, tongue let me finish, cheek. Let me finish. The level of absurdity that we can have a game out like this just goes to show how system, how the system is broken. This game, it's it's Postal Two without the humor. Yeah, I mean this is dead serious. Postal Two These is develop, fucking offensive. The developers in the, for this game are also a little bit creepy. Like some of them have been like traced back to weird political affiliations, yeah. and I mean, the game's being made in Poland. In in an ideal world, we wouldn't see a game like this. But then, I mean, you can I, see right here, like. The game is just like, and these people are all like screaming for their lives and begging to be spared. And like, I mean, it's a burly game, but this game, but this game right. gets banned from Steam. All right, so this we've got this game, Hotline Miami. Yeah, Hotline Miami Two. Both games that get a lot of uh, deserved praises. They're, they're hard games. They're fun games, but they're eight bit pixely and they're retro and blah blah blah. Diablo. Same kind of game. You fucking kill everything that moves in Diablo. But they're all aliens but and they're creatures all, they're, they're and all monsters. Creature, they're all undead creatures. Yeah. Um, because this is humans. It does make a big difference, well, though. <laughs> but Call of Duty. Yeah. Battlefield. You're killing humans in that one. And oh, you're doing it under the pre pretense of a fucking flag in war. Yeah. There was actually one time I was playing Call of Duty really drunk. I had come in from like a club night or whatever and I'd been drinking vodka and Red Bulls and I couldn't go to sleep. And I started playing Call of Duty and it wigged me out. Because I started realizing that I was just massacring like... Yeah. Like I just, it was very odd because I'd never, for whatever reason, being drunk got me to that place where I was like, I really thought about what I was doing in the game and I was like bugged out by it. 
But then the next day I woke up and I went right back to play. <laughs> and look, and, and so the, this is the thing. This is why, you know, I, and again, one of the reasons I say I'm okay with hatred and not with the other one. You can't target one individual group. You cannot target them. You cannot target hom uh, homosexuals, lesbians, transgender, by any of those, uh, anybody. You couldn't trans, you know, somebody did a Christian only shooting game. I'm not religious, but I would have a problem with it. Just like I'd have a problem with a religious shooting game that only targeted Muslims or Jews, or even if there was a game that somebody, somebody had developed that only targeted straight people. I'd have a problem because you're victimizing one particular group. If you want to victimize everybody, go ahead and do it. But when you get down to the fucking nitty gritty and you're using it to push your fucked up little insular petty message, then we have a problem. And this, like I said, this this dude, this individual, this uh, this fuck bar. Um, I hope at some point uh, somebody um, you know does something nasty to him. I hope he ends up in jail because then. He will become very, very popular with people. So how far do you think games can go, Marcus, before they cross the line? Is there a line? Because even hatred honestly doesn't go that much farther than, like, Manhunt, which was Rockstar's kind it, of it, depraved look, game. But again, I mean, how far does it, you know, does it go further than fear, do, you know, which Is was it ever a right to censor a game? Even though we both think this, this game where you shoot transgenders or whatever is deplorable and disgusting... Still, there's that principal issue of just censorship at all. Well, this is it. I mean, this is a, this is America. Oh, we don't I have. I mean, censor how do you draw the line and well, say, well, we'll censor this, but we don't censor that? This this is the thing. I mean, we have free speech here, and we have you know we have no you know no censorship issues, and you can't censor my guns. But oh my God, there's a nipple. No. Don't show me a fucking nipple. Oh my God, my children. Would anybody think of the children? Let's give them a gun instead. Well, um, in some places are reverse, where whoa. whoa. Sex is okay, violence isn't okay. Uh, I'd actually be down with sex being okay and yeah. violence not being okay. <laughs> That's because I come from Europe where we are not demonized the nipple. Yeah. We have not demonized the vagina or the penis. Um, <laughs> and we don't really have much gun issues. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and people will be saying, oh, why don't you just fuck off there? No, I'm here to piss you off and I'm staying. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, look, I think it's a perspective problem. I think it's, a, it, you know, again, we look at society as a whole. Uh, you know, you go... Um, back to there's a Mike Judge movie Idiocracy yeah I've seen it and this is the that's the world we're living in the movie itself was kind of bad but the premise was you know this is this Noble. is the, so how far can games go games can continue to go I mean we're about to hit VR we're about to hit um, the because that's when things really start to get murky when you when you're actually in the game doing the action things do change yeah I mean there's, there's a movie from uh, like 15 20 years ago called Strange Days. Yeah, like 15 that's, years I've ago, it was 99, well, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, with uh, Ray Fiennes and Angela Bassett, and uh, the movie itself wasn't the greatest, but I would definitely. I like, enjoyed it at the age I was at. I, I would enjoyed say, it. Well, because there was boobies. <laughs> right. Um, I would say go find that movie streaming and just see where we are, where we're heading, games wise, as opposed to that, because it talks about you know people recording memories and you get to experience them. That's the way we're we're going to be heading. Uh, beheading. See, uh, <laughs> um, we're going to be going in that direction, and it's uh, you know it's down to we, we're going to you can have too many freedoms. Like when people say freedom, a lot of people will disagree with that. Well, this is it. I mean, the ones who want too many freedoms are general uh, want all the freedoms are generally the ones who will then use those freedoms to take advantage of a people right. less fortunate or slightly different to themselves. So yeah, freedoms should be a basic privilege. Unfortunately, we're not psychologically evolved <laughs> as a, a, you know as a society to, to to cope with those. So you need some rules, you need some regulations, you need some boundaries. In an ideal world, we wouldn't see kill or f word, we wouldn't see hatred. But then, by the same thing, would we see Call of Duty? Would we see Assassin's Creed? You know, where you can go and stab somebody in the head and walk away. I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. Uh, right, okay. Let's talk about Valve. Some more. <laughs> this show brought to you by Gaben. Yeah. He has lots of money but won't give you Half-Life 3. <laughs> Gaben. Um, Valve allows dem uh, developers to perma-ban people on cheating games. Yeah. Oh, cheating games. I don't even know if it's just cheating. I think also I if think they're... I think forums. Uh, if they less... act like jerks or whatever. 
it wouldn't be great if Valve allowed uh, Valve to develop uh, to ban developers from doing stupid shit on their systems yeah. and submitting crappy games. I guess. <laughs> Look, I mean, more, more power, to, more power to you. It's like you know. I think this is great. I think this is the way the world is going, or the internet world is going. Is that you're eventually going to the people who are trolls online are all going to end up being marginalized to where they all have to make each other suffer. But they will. And you're already yeah. seeing it with games, like games like League of Legends. What they do is, if you act like a jackass, they don't ban you from the game. What they do is they put you in a pen with all the other people who are jackasses. So you guys can all be jerks to each other and nobody cares because you're all jerks. But they reinforce, they basically then they sit there and reinforce their own, oh, woe is me because I, you know, I'm a truth bringer and I stood up for myself. I'm now, you know, block, block, uh, block stuff. And everyone's like, yeah, I said the same thing. So dude, you're totally right. So it, all it does is it fucking cultivates and But it keeps them from, the bo- from I'm drinking ruining the time of other people who are trying to enjoy something. Oh look, I'm I'm all I'm all for you know weeding out the smackheads. Um, I would love to see the perma ban basically extend to an electrical surge going down the fucking line <laughs> to not only fry the computer but also f- um, this is perhaps we can something we can have with virtual reality fries the fucking last remaining brain cell of these <laughs> pond dwellers because they are no use to humanity whatsoever. Here's kind of the rub with this though. The rub is that the developers actually have. 100 percent power in this like it's, it's it's their look it's their ball it's their ball it's their field it's their rules it's their Valve stadium no it's state. their fucking state but look it could it could get ugly if like they're it's, starting to ban people who just say that they don't like the game it's like, going to because get there's ugly. no checks and balances with Valve. so these developers are like oh this guy left a review maybe it was a very thoughtful review and maybe it was completely correct and accurate but it's negative, and it gives them a bad score. They can get rid of that person out of that community, which I think on the whole of the community could present issues. For this is what happens when you're... you have too many freedoms. <laughs> I'm going, you know, I mean, nothing, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely, which is why we can't trust politicians. We can't trust a lot of people. And 99 times out of 100, the person moderating the, the you know, the dev, uh, you know, the, the, the dev forums or whatever, for on one of these Steam channels uh, or Steam pages is going to be some fucking 23-year-old, you know, first job, got given this and is like, I'm going to ban everybody who doesn't like my game. And yeah, again, it's a case of not having the, the patience. Um, and it's going to spectacularly backfire in some ways. But I also think that, yeah, the, the trolls should be banned and should be pushed away so that they can all basically go live in 8chan. And then we find a way to get rid of 8chan. <laughs> Is, what is 8chan? Is, it's is, like, is, it's, does 4chan it, not exist anymore? Are they, well, isn't it, they went from 4chan to 8chan. So 4chan doesn't exist anymore? I think it still exists, but they, they were... It's a splinter group of 4chan. Exactly. Wow. It's, it's too extreme for 4chan. But, <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, again, saying something. this is why you need some accountability for what you post and say. For and sure. For sh- look, I agree. Online. Like, look, si- a big part of Sifted is sifting out a lot of these people who are corrosive and destroy a community. I mean, look, I agree with it a thousand percent. I put my money behind that concept. So I get it. But I also feel like Valve, that's like me running Sifted and saying, okay, moderators, you guys can do whatever you want. You can permaban people. You don't have to tell the management about it. We don't need to vet anything. We don't need to go. Files I would never do people that. Their own little pasture. You know, they're giving the developers their own little pasture. And it, well, you know, look, on Sifted Week, we're doing the same thing. If you get banned, you actually aren't completely banned from using the site. You'll still be able to come and check out all the, the content curation and everything. You just won't be able to participate. Unless you're a total smackhead, because then it's like, you know... The, well, no, you, the, no, the end of it is you just can't communicate with everybody else. You you will lose your posting privileges, you'll lose your forum privileges, you'll lose your ability to message other users, but you can still use the base of the site. So we're kind of using the same strategy, but to go back to what I was saying, if I were not to look at or the management we're not to look at each case before we ban somebody and we're just trusting our moderators to be have the final call and everything like that's not fair to our users and so i feel like valve needs to have some kind of checks and balances in this process i don't think they can just leave it up to a developer I think we've, well basically what we've decided today is valve, valve needs 
some checks and balances on everything You're they right. do. And they I do. think maybe at first they started out with a good ideal. And they were like, look, we'll let the community decide. And I think a lot of times that's a noble ideal to run your business around, but ultimately it can lead you down these very narrow roads. And I think that's what they're seeing now, that they've, in, they've brought in some new features while still keeping with their same standards in other areas. Yeah, look, um, and look, I know the way around, you know, for Sifted, the, the simple answer is, I am the only one who gets to ban people. <laughs> Marcus is the head ban hammer. I am the ban <laughs> nuclear fucking missile. All right, so I think we've piled on Valve enough today. We won't talk about Valve again for a while, because you know they're not going to have anything at E3. Uh, but um, bump. They, they never do. Uh, again, <laughs> that's why they don't come to E3, because Gabe is afraid of three. Yeah. <laughs> if they changed it to E4, they'd be there every year. Uh, he just that maybe he just has this psychological ter and terror when it comes to it. Um, uh, wow, we've kept going. The, the big six lasted s over sixty minutes. That's good. That's good. That means we had good topics that were wide reaching and had a lot to talk about. But we do have a trailer of yeah, the week. This I week. think we should cut the deep dive this week. I mean, yep. even though we did have that um, three-hour interview with Gabe. No. Uh, who's we're standing by on on uh, on Skype right now? Are you game? And we're going to show the first ever footage of Half Life. Yeah, uh, we're we'll going to have to. That. Yeah, that's going to have to go. I'm afraid. Instead, we will go with our trailer of the week, which I'm not going to watch because again, stop releasing fucking trailers and give us the game, Warner Brothers. Yeah. So this is like once again another trailer of the week for Batman Arkham Knight. Is how this the is this third on? time? How, how long is this on? Another two minutes. This is a two minute one. Yeah. But look, their trailers are awesome, and this trailer Give in me particular. The fucking game! Have you watched this trailer yet? No, I am not watching the fucking trailers. Wait, I want to play the game. You know what was in this trailer, though, right? No, I don't. There's a care. new game. There's a new game. Blah play blah <laughs> blah. I don't care. I am waiting to play the game. Well, there Stop is. Stop spoiling it. Give me the fucking game. Well, there is a brand play new game. Play the trailer play. so I can turn my back. <laughs> There's new gameplay in there. Watch it now. Prophecy has come true. From the ashes of Arkham City, the fires are raging, and Gotham is burning. I can see that same fire in your eyes. Before this night is through, that fire will consume you. I really wish Marcus were willing to talk about that trailer because there's some really cool stuff in there that could oh, generate no. some awesome, awesome discussion. Well, we'll discuss it when I've played the right. goddamn game. Fair enough, fair it's, enough. No, it's ridiculous the level. People think that let's create a story now by giving away so much of the game. I call it Ubisoft disease because they've patented this way of releasing 30 billion trailers for a fucking game because I oh, agree with that. we delayed the game yeah. again because we couldn't get it finished and so now we have to, the PR people have to create more stories so therefore we'll do more trailers. I don't want to see another Arkham, uh, Arkham City, Arkham Knight fucking trailer. I want the game 
Quit it. Well, it is coming soon, but I will agree with you. The so media overload for this Christmas. game has been insane. There's so much stuff coming out for it. So we're going to wrap up the show. Before we go, there are a couple of things we want to mention very briefly. For one, Nintendo is creating rides for Universal Studios theme parks. Princess Toadstool's Wild Ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not going to be one of them. <laughs> the tunnel of love that's basically a fucking pipe. Yeah. A couple delays. Mirror's Edge 2 has been delayed officially into 2016. Dead Rising 2 has also been officially delayed into 2016. I was looking forward to Dead Island 2. What I, what I will say is, even though you are delayed into 2016, don't release 2016 fucking trailers. Yeah. <laughs> Go quiet. Go dark. Shut down for a while. Push your stories back. It's called PR Tactics. Dead Island's trailers are usually pretty good, though. The, they, only, well, the only one that they've released so far has been really good. And remember how that first one really put the game on the map for they, the first they game? Only, they only do three or four. Yeah. As opposed to 304. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised that that game slipped. I mean, honestly, when the first game released, it probably should have been delayed because it was a little janky it, when it, it first some, came it out. It had some glitches, but was still fun. I think this one, I'm looking forward to it because obviously it's a change of environment. But I also think perhaps... After, um, uh, was it uh, Good Night and Good Luck, or what was that? Is it set in Los Angeles? Because the initial in trailer California. was at Venice Beach. Yeah, it's, it's California-esque, and I've already told the, the PR team that my house better be in it. <laughs> so that there's basically me on a rocking chair with a shotgun. Mirror's Edge delay, not a big surprise, obviously with Star Wars Battlefront coming. Yeah. They're probably going to move that out no I matter what, like even if it got one. finished. Mirror's Edge 1 just gave me motion sickness really badly. One of the few games to do that. I enjoyed it, but I waned on it as the game went on. I Tony Hawk. I feel like it built in. Tony Hawk 5 officially announced. Go Robomondo. Joshi, was... my friend Joshi, who is uh, who is basically at Robomondo. He's worked on a few Tony Hawks over the years. That and was he... a Game Informer exclusive this week. They unveiled the first details from the game, so go check out all their coverage at GameInformer.com. I guess the one thing you could say about it without ruining their coverage is that it's a throwback. It's what you it, wanted, actually. It what is. you were talking and about. This is what I have faith in the Robomondo team because I know that those guys get it. They've done it before, and now they get to play in the new sandbox of the of the current gen. And uh, yeah, got nothing but love for Josh and the Robomondo team. Yep. Make so, it so that game's coming out before the end of the year, and a full price game. It's not going to be a downloadable game. So it'll be a sixty dollars Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five is the official name of it. So yeah. Full entry in the series here before the end of the year. So that's going to wrap it up for today's Game Face. As always, make sure that you follow us on all our social media channels. If you're watching the live stream, why not add us right now? Follow me on Instagram, you bastards. I'll show you pictures of my dog. Yeah. On Instagram, I don't really do jack. Can you believe it's almost it's been almost a year since we ended up with a dog? Yeah. If you do a, love that dog. You post more pictures of that dog than... He's adorable. He's, he's you know, a cute dog. When we found him, he was abandoned, and he had a little mohawk, and he'd been abused, and now he's, uh, he, he's, he basically yeah. fits into our house because he's a total mouthy asshole. Well, there you go. So as always, follow us on all our channels. Um, we do message out a lot of stuff, like sometimes this show's time will change or the day will change. Uh, you definitely want to follow us on Twitter for all the latest on Sifted. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this week. We'll be back next Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Maybe. 9 p.m. Eastern. Same bat time, same bat place. Well, you know a Warner Brothers 50 cents. Uh, game face is up and out.